Hello, everybody. Our glorified, our glorified bodies guaranteed. That is for the believer in Jesus Christ. I was so excited this morning that I thought I'm just going to share this. I pray that I'm able to make sense. I'm in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, um, verse 22. It says, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Okay, now when I read that, I was so excited. I'll, I'll get on to what I'm meaning. But see, okay, so we know that in Adam, the curse came. That's when the fall of mankind came. So everyone is destined to hell. All because of the fall of man. And we can blame Adam and Eve all we want. If we were in that position, we would have done the same thing. Because we're fallen man and women. So, but see, even in Christ Jesus then, meaning if you're born again and you have the spirit of the living God, you have been born again. You have passed from death to life. You are now in his kingdom, living as his child. We shall be made alive. Now, we know that that's also meaning being born again. But see, it's going on here in um, first in first Corinthians chapter 15 about the resurrection. Oh, hang in there with me. Um, so I'm going, going to turn now to first, um, first Corinthians 15, and we're going to be looking here at verse 49. But before I read that, stop and think. See, do you get so excited sometimes about receiving our glorified bodies that it's almost, you have to pinch yourself thinking, will it really happen? Will it really happen? Well, are you born again? Did that really happen? Do you believe it? It happened. Well, then it's a given. The next thing that's going to happen, you have already received your born again spirit. Okay? You have been translated into the kingdom of light. Now we're just waiting for the next thing. And that is our glorified bodies. It is a guarantee thing. It Jesus doesn't do things halfway. When he purchased us, he purchased it all. We are just in the transitioning period. We are to be proclaiming his gospel while we are in these earthen vessels. But it's all for a purpose. The things we do now affect eternity, our eternity in the kingdom of God. Oh, we have got to be looking and thinking with eternal minds and being in the word of God, hearing the word and build, building our faith. So do we believe that we are sinful beings? We better. That's how we got saved, knowing that we needed a savior. Do we believe that man fell when Adam and Eve disobeyed? We better. Do we see the members of our body wanting to sin, uh, having that battle uh, of wanting to not sin against God? And if you're not born again, then it really doesn't matter to you. You don't even acknowledge sin. Now, if the Holy Spirit's drawing you, then you better run to him because that would mean that he is wooing you to him, drawing you to him. But see, a born again Christian, the worst place to be is battling against sin. You want to die to self and relinquish it, give it over to Jesus Christ and live free in his spirit. If we are born again, we know that we need a savior and that we have been given new life. Now, in 1 Corinthians 15, 49, and as we have been, and, ha and as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall, future tense, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Our inner man is being renewed every day. Our outer earthen vessel is deteriorating. Believe you me, I see me changing with every video. It is, it is perishing, okay? But it says, it's a promise we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. 
Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. That is what we are waiting for. If you have been born again, then it is a guarantee that you and I are going to be given glorified bodies. It's just plain part of God's gift, part of God's salvation to us. It is his promise. It's going to happen. Hallelujah. Then let's read on. This is 1 Corinthians 15, 51. We're going to read on down. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. So we will not all die. There will be those of us that will be still alive at the rapture of the church. And then it says here, but we shall all be changed, even though some will be dead in Christ, some will be alive in Christ. Like if it would happen right this moment, you and I are alive. If you've been born again, you're alive in Christ. But we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for the corruptible must put on incorruption. It's a given. And this mortal must put on immortality. It's what God planned. So when future tense, so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. There are some false teachers and followers of them that think that death doesn't have to touch a Christian. That is not what the word of God says. We just read it. And if you go back in 1 Corinthians um, verse 26, the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. See, we all have an appointment with death. Okay. Even if right now the rapture would happen, my physical body, your physical body would see death as such because this, incor this corruptible has to put on incorruption. So this body is going to perish. Now, it says here um, in verse 55, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. This is what we should be doing while we're waiting. Always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Now, let's turn to Hebrews 9, 27 and 28. Because see, all of us will come to the judgment of Jesus Christ, everyone. Now, we're going to look at Hebrews 9, 27 and 28. As I was saying, every everyone is appointed to die. And then the judgment. Let's read this. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them, listen, and unto them that look for him, are you looking? Shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation? Oh, everyone, we have got to be watching and looking and awake and, uh, and abounding in the work of the Lord, just like we had just read. We have got to stay alert. We have got to keep that hope burning within us. Oh, it, 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 is, it is a coming. I want to read here. Um, under the old covenant, the Israelites watched 
intensely for the reappearance of their high priest after he had gone into the sanctuary to make the atonement. Likewise, believers, knowing that their high priest has entered the heavenly sanctuary as their advocate, wait with earnest hope for his reappearing to bring a full and complete salvation. Let us not grow weary in the waiting. That's why we are warned to not grow impatient. God is still at work here, everyone. But oh, what, what is awaiting us? It is, it is in the air. Be excited. Be in the word. He will encourage you. Our glorified bodies are soon to be given to us. His redeemed. It is a promise. It is just plain as, as the day you got born again. It is the, the, the finishment of it, if that's a word. It is the completion of it. Us receiving our glorified bodies. Be encouraged because as it is called a mystery, behold, I show you a mystery back in 1 Corinthians 15. We shall not all sleep. That means not everyone's going to be dead in Christ. There are going to be those alive and remain. And why do you think we're told to comfort one another with these words, everyone? We need to be looking up and sounding the alarm for Jesus is soon to get the faithful, those watching. That's what it said. Those that are watching for his appearing. I will close on that. It said in Hebrews 9, 28, So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Hallelujah. Everyone, that day is winding closer and closer. You can feel it. Be encouraged. Wake up those around you. Sound the alarm. Oh, Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your promises to all those that are alive in you, that have been born again in you. Father, if anyone here would listen to this, this video and not be born again by your spirit, your spirit right now will be quickening to them. They will have the, the unction in them knowing, uh-uh, they will have the conviction, I should say, in within them that they are not right with you. That they should, right now, repent of their sins, call upon you to be their Lord and Savior, knowing that they are a fallen human being and that they are destined for eternal damnation without Jesus Christ's redemption plan applied to their life eternal, eternally. Lord, all of us are destined there without repenting of our sins, calling upon Jesus and asking for forgiveness of sin. Father, may they repent this day and come to, new, to you as their Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Keep looking up, everybody. Keep praying. Keep encouraging brothers and sisters. For it is a given. It is a promise. It is a guarantee. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless each and every one of you.